This video is going to explore the parts of the Nikon FM10 film camera. We're going to start by looking at the camera from a top view. On the left hand side of the camera, while the lens is facing away from you, you will find the rewind crank. This part of the camera does two things. One, it is used to rewind the film when you are done shooting, and two, it is used to open the back of the camera in order to put the film inside. On the other side of the camera, towards the center, you will find the shutter control dial. This is a series of numbers ranging from 1 to 2000. The shutter control dial also has a small window with ISO printed below it. Here is a closer view of the shutter control dial. The shutter in the camera controls how long it takes to take a photograph. These numbers represent the time. The shutter can also control how motion looks in your photograph. Whatever number is next to the black line on the camera is what the shutter, the shutter the camera is set to. The ISO setting is found within the shutter control dial. ISO deals with how sensitive the film is to light. This is also known as film speed. The film we use in class has an ISO of 400. You want to make sure that the number within the window is always set at 400. If this changes, then the light meter will not be able to give you an accurate reading. This will result in photographs that are too dark or too light. In order to change the ISO of the film camera, you just lift up on the shutter control dial and twist. And that will allow you to change the ISO number. Remember, the film we use in class is ISO 400, so you want to make sure that the number in the window is always set to 400. Next to the shutter control dial, you will find a black button. This is the shutter release. When you push down on this button, the camera takes a photograph. This works in conjunction with the film advanced lever. The film advance is what moves your camera to the next frame, aka the next photograph. This is how the film advance and shutter release work together. In order to advance your film, you pull the advance lever out all the way and then you let go, allowing it to swing back. Once it swings back, you're able to take a picture by pressing the shutter release. Make sure that you're advancing all the way. If you pull it part of the way and the lever stays put, that means you did not advance it far enough. So make sure you pull it all the way out, release so that it swings back, and then from there you're able to take your picture. If you cannot take a picture, that means that you did not advance your film. Another reason why you might not be able to take a picture even if you've advanced is that the small safety on the film advance lever is pushed all the way in. That goes underneath the shutter release button and prevents it from being depressed all the way down. So you have to make sure that the advance lever is pulled out just a little bit so that you can press the button down. Advance, take your picture. Advance, take a picture. If you're no longer able to advance or take a picture, that means that you are done with your roll of film. From there, you will be able to properly rewind your film. The last part on the top of the body of the camera is the counter. This tells you how many pictures you have taken. Now we're going to look at the lens of the camera. The lens will contain two to three different dials. Two of the dials you will find on every lens, while the third may not be present depending on what kind of lens is attached to the camera. The dial closest to the body of the camera controls the aperture. This is a series of numbers that can range from 2.8 to 22. 
The aperture determines the intensity of light entering the camera. This also controls the depth of field. Every lens will have this. The number that is under the dot is what aperture number the camera is set to. At the far end of the lens, you will find the focus dial. Every lens will also have a focus dial. This dial adjusts how sharp or blurry your photograph will be. When you're working with shallow depth of field, you'll be able to adjust the focus to the area you would like to be sharp. You have to adjust your focus for every single photograph. These cameras do not automatically focus for you like digital cameras or your cell phones will do. If your picture is blurry, then it will forever be blurry. There is no way to fix that. This photograph is sharp and in focus. The photograph on the right is out of focus or blurry. If, you, if your photograph is blurry, it will forever be blurry and you cannot fix this in the darkroom. Some lenses may have a third dial in the center of the lens. This is a zoom. The zoom allows you to take photographs closer to your subjects without physically moving closer. If the camera does not have a zoom, you can easily just move closer to your subject. In both cases, you can only get oh so close to your subject before the camera will not be able to focus properly. Be conscious of that. This photograph is with the lens completely zoomed out. You can see all of the objects along with the classroom in the background. This photograph is of the same subject, but completely zoomed in. You do not see all of the objects, nor do you see the classroom in the background. By zooming in, you can crop your subjects in a very interesting way. Now we'll look at the bottom of the camera. Typically the bottom of the camera will have three important components. The first one is a large black plastic disc. This is where the batteries are housed. The batteries power the light meter which you need in order to get a correct exposure. If you see that the black disc is missing chances are that the batteries are also gone. This means that the light meter will not work, so do not take photographs. Let your photo teacher know as soon as possible and they'll be able to help you. In the center of the bottom of the camera, you'll find a hole that looks as though a screw would fit in. This is the tripod mount. If you use a tripod, this is where the camera attaches to the tripod. Last, we have the rewind release button. This is a small black button that you press in. This is crucial for rewinding your film after shooting. When you push the button, the camera releases or lets go of the film, allowing you to rewind it back into the canister. If this button is not pressed in before rewinding, you will rip your film and potentially damage the camera. In order to open up the back of the camera, you pull up on the rewind crank and the door will pop open. To close it, just press it down. Sometimes you might have to give the rewind crank a little bit of a pull or tug in order for it to release the door. going to look at the back and inside of the camera. In the center, towards the top, you will find the viewfinder. This is where you look through to see what it is you will be taking a photograph of. Unlike cell phone and iPad cameras and some digital cameras, you have to physically put your eye up to the camera to see what you are shooting. On the left, we have our rewind crank, which also opens up the back of the camera. This is what we used in order to open up the back. Inside the camera, on the left hand side, you will find a cylindrical opening. This is where the film canister is placed. The positioning of the rewind crank determines whether or not you can place film within that opening. When the film crank is pulled up, as in the image on the left, you will be able 
to put your film in and the opening is completely empty. If the rewind crank is pushed down, like in the photograph on the right, there is a silver spool that sticks out from the top of the opening. This prevents you from putting the film in. Once the canister is inside the camera, the rewind crank can be pushed down, allowing the spool to enter the film canister, holding it in place. On the opposite side of the camera, you'll find a black spool. This is called the take-up spool. Film is attached to the take-up spool, and as you take photographs in advance, the film wraps around the spool. To the left of the take-up spool are the winding sprockets. There are two sets, one at the top and one at the bottom. The film has sprocket holes at the top and bottom, which match up with the winding sprockets. As you advance the film, these help move your film forward and keep it lined up properly. In the center, inside of the camera, is the shutter. The shutter is a series of blinds that open and close when you take a photograph. How long the shutter is open for depends on what you set in the shutter control dial. It is very important that you do not touch the shutter. It is very delicate. If you poke or prod at it, you could potentially break it, and then the camera would have to be prepared, uh, repaired. So please be very careful when working with the inside of the camera.